Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, uh, we have like how many candidates do we have? Six. Oh, that's good. Um, okay, so for this afternoon, our subject for our uh, message is regarding about baptism. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think you see it on the board. The title of the message is the scent of water. Significance of believers baptism and uh, in giving reverence to the reading of God's word, can I invite everyone to stand up and let's read our inspirational text and we have it on the board. It will be from Matthew chapter 28 verse 16 to 20. So if you have your Bible with you, kindly follow with me. And this is how it says on New International Version. Verse 16, Then the eleven, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we would like to praise you and lift up you, Lord God, in this congregation, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity that we could gather here and uh, worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. We pray, Lord God, that uh, you will bless the message, Lord, and uh, that it would illuminate, Lord God, the message that you would like us to hear uh, this afternoon. I personally pray, Lord God, that you use me only as your mouthpiece, Lord. Be glorified, Lord, and uh, uh, Lord, we entrust everything to you. Prepare our hearts and our mind as we listen to your word. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, just like what the title said, the significance of believers baptism. So, we will discuss the, uh, the topic about baptism. And uh, as an introduction, let me uh, pose this question to each and every one. Do we realize that there is a paradox happening today? Do you know what the paradox is? It is an inconsistency, a reverse, or an odd situation. That there is a world full of baptized non-Christians and unbaptized Christians. Let me repeat. That there is a world of full of baptized non-Christians and unbaptized Christians. There are a world of full of people who have been baptized, uh, which is not true baptism. But nonetheless, it is identified as baptism. Baptism who have nothing to do with the church and don't know the Lord genuinely. There's a world of people who have been baptized in the mode of infant baptism by sprinkling and has been dominating the baptism in the Christian church historically. Probably you will know that in the world right now there is a lot of people who would claim that they have been baptized, but like what I'm saying, it is not in accordance to church uh, doctrine. And on the other side, there are a large group of people who do know the Lord Jesus Christ, and they are inside the church and have not been baptized. Marami pong mga tao, they are already serving, they are already attending church, but up to now, they are still and uh, they are still not baptized. So it's the opposite. Marami baptized, pero in a wrong baptism, but there are some people who are not yet baptized, but they are inside the church. And in, a, in an ideal situation, 
Non-believers should not be baptized. And believers must be baptized. Do you agree? Dapat yung mga binabaptize po is supposed to be yung mga nanampalataya na sa Panginoon. Those who have already believed. And today, the purpose of our study is to help us understand the importance of baptism. You know, by the end of this afternoon, I hope once we go out from that door, we already understand the significance of baptism. And we will try to arm each one of us the truth about baptism so that we can encourage our children who are old enough, encourage our acquaintances, our friends, and our family to, the, to be obedient to the matter of baptism. You know, purpose natin ngayon. Okay? It says on the board, to help us understand the importance of baptism. Maganda pala yung may screen na ganyan ko. Kailangan niya natin tayo sa akin. Kaya maganda pala yung may kulang napansin. Okay? So, before we proceed with our, with our lesson or with our message, let me prompt you with some problems that I have seen uh, happening right now. Let us look at some of the problems that we are facing today. May mga problema tayo eh. Did we know that if we fail to take baptism seriously, that it may lead us to some of the root immense problems that exist inside the church today? Kung hindi tayo magiging serious, if we're not going to be serious about the matter of baptism, problem will arise inside the local church. Why? Because without making an issue of baptism and making a deep importance in baptism, number one, the church can accumulate people who would not want to make public profession of Christ at all and that would be a big problem. There would be no conviction at all. You know, there would be a lot of people who would not want to make public profession. Ganun ang magiging end result. If we're not going to be serious about baptism, mapupuno yung simbahan natin ng silya ng mga tao who doesn't want to be uh, professing the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is important that we have to be serious about it. Number two, uh, actually in some churches, there is a great effort being made today to those kind of people to be very comfortable. Diba, minsan siya naririnig natin, ah, okay lang yan. Wait lang muna tayo. Huwag natin i-pressure. Okay lang naman. Wait, uh, hintayin natin yung right timing. You know, whereas contrary to the biblical history, if we're going back to the New Testament, in the early church, we would see that the demand is laid on the people that if you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you have to make public confession openly and immediately. Remember in the, in the New Testament when the church has been introduced? Right there and there. They have been baptized immediately. But nowadays, wait lang muna, let's have some time hanggang sa ma-realize nila. Pero that is not the same during the New Testament church. And to add on, failure to take baptism seriously blurs the reality of church who belongs to Christ and who is not. Minsan hindi na natin nakikita kung sino talaga yung sa Panginoon at kung sino yung hindi. There are some people who just simply attend in the church just to simply to be part of the church. But they don't have the intention of being a true Christian professing what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for their life. There is no distinction. Hindi na natin nakikita kung sino yung totoo dun sa mga hindi totoo. And lastly, failure to take baptism seriously is the root of all problems in the lives of individual, individual Christians because it betrays a level of indifference towards a very explicit or clear command. It produces, it produces confusion or misconception. What do you mean? You know, what I mean is that there is maybe a little bit mystery in love in the way we've been commanded to love, right? People have reacted on the, when, when we are commanded to love, iba-iba yung reaction natin. We have different reactions of how we express love, right? Pag sinabi ng Lord, you have to love, iba-iba yung expression natin. But in baptism, it should be the same. Walang difference doon. There's no, there's no uh, misconception about it. It should be clear-cut. 
You know, it is clear when one is baptized and one when one is not. There is no mystery there. Okay? And in order for us to fully understand our subject, baptism, let me give you first some highlights about baptism. Uh, I will try to give you some, some idea where it originates and where we could find it mentioned in the Bible. Because sometimes we have read it so many times already, and sometimes we thought that that is the baptism that the Lord wants us to do. But uh, if we're going to uh, totally analyze it, hindi po pala. Uh, let me let me show you what I meant. Let's open our Bible. Okay, I think I have it on my PowerPoint. Ephesians chapter four, verse one to six. I remember this is uh, a reminder of Paul to the early church, the Ephesian church, the Ephesian church, and this is to unite them in maturity in the body of Christ. It's a reminder for the church. Okay, and look at what it says here. As prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live life worthy of the calling you have received. In a sabi ni Paul, verse, verse 2, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one.